Hi, I'm Pastor Scott Seeky from Amazing Grace Lutheran Church in Lawrenceville, Georgia. Thank you for watching this week's sermon. Enjoy. Well, the good news is that uh, the boys' lacrosse season ended last week, so you don't have to hear any more lacrosse stories after today. The bad news, of course, is that the old guy season picks up in a month, so you'll have to start hearing about my games instead of theirs. Sorry about that. But uh, la so the season ended last week, and it was the playoffs. It was very exciting. And we had a first round playoff game against our arch rival team that we'd never beaten, and we'd actually never even won a playoff game. So the game starts. It was bright and early, 9 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday. And we scored the first goal, and I was like, oh, this is great. And then we scored the second goal. So this is going really well. And then we scored the third goal. And I was like, I'm not really sure what's happening here, but the other team started getting a little chippy. And you know, they're boys. They're 10 and 11, they've got a stick in their hands. Whack. One of our kids drops to the ground. Penalty on the other team. So I run out like the coach, you know, I'm the coach. Like, like I know what I'm doing, you know, and I kneel down next to the kid, I'm like, how are you? And he's like, ah, I'm like, okay, are you gonna be all right? Yeah, I'll be fine, and he comes off the field. A Couple minutes later, we score another goal, we score another one, whack, another kid goes down. So I'm running out there again, right? The ref throws a penalty, which is good because penalties are the only way that you get 10 and 11 year old boys to learn to not whack. Um, <laughs> but I'm like, I'm lying next to this, I'm like, here I am again? Really? So he goes off the field. Well, we scored another one. All right, so now we're just destroying this poor team of 10 and 11 year old boys. Whack, and another one goes down. And I didn't see a penalty this time. The ref didn't call a penalty. So I run out there and I'm kneeling next to this kid. He's lying on the ground, he's rolling around. He's like, ah, I got hit in the back. And the referee's just kind of standing there. And I just gave him a look, <laughs> right? Now, one of the other coaches said that the look that I gave him was like the look that Rocky gave in Rocky III when <laughs> Apollo Creed died. Now, I had no idea what he was talking about. I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, this is the look. That's the look, <laughs> all right? So that's the look that I gave this, this poor 17-year-old referee who ended up actually throwing a penalty flag and calling it. But I was not happy. I was annoyed that this kept happening. I mean, these are kids, right? And I understand it. They're boys, you give them a stick. And honestly, that's kind of why I like lacrosse. But <laughs> come on, really? I was annoyed. I was annoyed, uh, I was angry, I was agitated. I'm not sure how much longer I can go with the A words, but you get the idea. I was upset. You know, and when I read this act story, that's the part that jumps out at me. Is that, and I'm gonna read this again for you because I just think it's so interesting and brilliant. So here's Paul, right? And Paul and his missionary buddies, they're doing their missionary thing. They're going out and they're, um, they're preaching, right? Telling people about Jesus, right? Like they do, they leave every day and they go to their spots, they come home and they leave and they come home and they're doing a missionary thing. One day as we were going out to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination, she followed Paul and us and she would cry out, these men are slaves of the Most High God who proclaim to you a way of salvation. Okay, now what does that mean? It means she's making fun of them. So every day, Paul and his missionary buddies are going out and they're doing their missionary work and this woman is following them and pointing a finger at them and be like, ha ha, look at these guys, look at these guys. And what, is, what happens to Paul? Paul, very much annoyed, <laughs> turned and said to the spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her, and it came out that very hour. Paul gets annoyed, and the kingdom of God happens. Now, when we read in other places in the Bible, Jesus, especially with Jesus, Jesus is always healing people, he's constantly healing people, and usually it says he's filled with compassion and he healed them. Or he's moved by this, or there's this feeling of concern for the person. 
Paul's not like, I feel bad for this lady. Paul's like, she's driving me nuts. I'm going to cast this out of her. You know, I think if we were to like go around the room and talk about the different emotions that we could feel through which the kingdom of God would happen, we'd be like, you know, peace, joy, patience. These are the ones through which the kingdom of God happens. And if we were to start a list of the ones where the kingdom of God does not happen, my guess is that alphabetically speaking, at the top, near the top of the list, would be annoyed or angry or agitated or any of those things I felt on that lacrosse field or any of these things that Paul is feeling right now. We kind of have a sense that we're not supposed to feel that way, you know? And there's lots of feelings that we probably feel like we're not supposed to feel. When someone is sick, we're not supposed to be worried, right? Because we're Christians and we believe that God loves us and takes care of us, so we shouldn't be worried. When someone dies, we shouldn't be sad by that. They're off to heaven. It's a better place. shouldn't be sad. And when people are doing things that are wrong, shouldn't be annoyed by that. We should be able to, right, I don't know, turn the other cheek and have a spirit of reconciliation and peace in our hearts and all that. That's not realistic, first off, because we're people, we're human beings, and when we get sick, we get worried, when people die, we get sad, and when people do things that are bothersome, we get annoyed. It's just kind of the way it is. It's also unbiblical. I mean, you read the Bible, and when people get sick, they get worried. It happens. When people die in the Bible, people get upset. Jesus. If anybody's not going to get upset, it'd be Jesus, right? Lazarus dies, and what does Jesus do? He cries. Right? And when people do things that are annoying in the Bible, people in the Bible get annoyed. We got Paul getting annoyed here. Jesus walks into the temple. He sees people making a bunch of money. What does he do to the tables? Flips them over. Throws them out of the temple. Getting annoyed it's actually fairly biblical. And the kingdom of God can happen through it. And I don't know about you, but, but for me, you know, I, I kind of want God to get annoyed, I think, sometimes. I think there are things that, you know, that, that God should probably get annoyed about. Um, if somebody is sick, I don't want God to just be like, oh, that's fine. That's cool. It'll all be okay. Somebody dies, I don't want God to just be like, oh, well, that's whatever. I mean, these four girls that died, these UGA students, I don't want a God who's just going to be like, oh, well, whatever. It's all right. And I don't want a God who's going to see things in the world that shouldn't be the way they are and not get annoyed by that and, and not do something. I mean, we talk about God as, as a parent, as a father usually, but on Mother's Day I think it's helpful to realize that, that God is bigger than just a mother, a father God. We can think of as a mother. That's all right. Yeah, you know what? Sometimes it's good for parents to get annoyed at their kids. Sometimes good things happen when we do that. I mean, that's part of what Mother's Day is, is right? right? We, we were kids, we give our moms a card, we're like, I know you got annoyed, but I love you because sometimes when you're annoyed, it helped me. It made me better off. I want God to be like that sometimes. I mean, I, I think we all do, right? The, the thing is, right, we, don't, we just don't want God to be annoyed at us. <laughs> right? I mean, that's what we don't want. So, you know, we can work on that, right? We can work on that. But we can also work on getting annoyed about the right things. I stand by the fact that I was annoyed on that lacrosse field. Now, Truth be told, like a minute later, when one of the parents of the other team was complaining about how the kid was still in the penalty box, the way I responded to that, mm, I might not be so proud of that. But, <laughs> but at that time, given that ref that rocky face, I'm okay with that. I stand by that one. And my prayer for each of us is that we can maybe set ourselves free from some of the expectations that we have of ourselves they're always going to be so perfectly calm and peaceful and nothing's ever going to bother us. 
It's all right sometimes to put on your rocky face. Right? God does. It's all right to do that. And when it happens, and it's following God, that's what, part of what following God is, I think. Part of following God is getting annoyed at the right things. And so my prayer for each of us is that instead of being the one God gets annoyed at, we can get annoyed with God together about the right things and not be afraid to put on a rocky face and let the kingdom of God happen. Remember, God loves you, and so do I. Amen.